humans, as they survive and evolve, they do it through colors. But who knew colors would divide the world? And just like that, one day, a color changed my life and things around me completely. I was in class seventh when I first got my periods. I was terrified to see blood down there. I stepped out of the washroom and my mother told me the procedure. She said, you're a woman now. And I was like, what? Was I not a woman all this while? Was I not aligning with my gender? Is today my rebirth? What is happening? That was the first instance in my life when I felt that my anatomy was defining my gender. And that made me wonder, what if for a month I don't get periods? Do I become a man then? No, wait, that's scary. I don't want to be like my male friends who are always fine. They are always okay. They cannot share emotions. Damn, it's scary to be boxed in that stereotypes of toxic masculinity. Women's clothing cost more than men's in six categories, except underwear, and costing to the average of 29% more than men. 85% of women professionals felt that at least once in their life, they were coined as bossy or dominative, where they were rightfully assertive. In India, women put 352 minutes a day into domestic work. That's a lot. And 49% of women in the country of 1.3 billion people don't have their work accounted for in annual GDP. According to UNICEF, girls spend 40% more time doing household chores than boys. And globally, over 2.7 billion women are legally restrained from having the same choices of jobs as men. Well, if you ask me, numbers are boring. So let's hear some stories. Stories convey the message better. I will share two stories with you. In the first one, women are traditionally the breadwinners of the family. They do all the tasks. And historically, they used to do the fishing and the extra fishes used to be traded with other tribes. So they had the element of sustainability with them. Fathers in one tribe spend approximately more than half of the day with their child. These fathers even offer their nipples to suck if the child is crying and mother is not allowed around. And it is very common for the fathers to wake up singing to their child so that they can sleep. Now the second story. I was very young when my father did a cover story about a village. And once the story was published, he narrated that to me. And he said that this story is about a village which never saw brides for 100 years. The entire village only had boys. The moment a girl was born in this village, she was asked to leave. And when I heard this story, the younger me said, thank God I was not born there. I escaped. Can you guess from which regions these stories belong to? The first story is about the Shambri and Bayaka tribes of South Africa. And the second story is about a Devda village near Jaisalmer, Rajasthan. Now I believe whether women work as breadwinners or men act as homemakers. At the end of the day, it's all about one word, choice. Choice is such a simple word. But imagine your choices being determined by the gender that you belong to and how your gender is different from your partner's. As I move ahead, I would like to share that how gender is complex. It's discomforting. I can see some people nodding. Gender is discomforting. Gender is like that annoying maths teacher 
that most of us hated in school? Because it asks you to step out of your comfort zone and solve the equations that may not have any meaning up front, but they play a big role. And just like maths, as we grow up, we either get ignorant towards it or we get intolerant towards it. I often wonder that how many times have gender affected me unless it troubled me. Have you guys ever thought that how often gender has affected you until and unless it has not troubled you in any manner? Often people ask me that why I chose gender studies as a discipline or why I chose gender as my profession that I'm pursuing right now. Well, the reason is very deep rooted and it takes me back to my evolution and what I am today. My grandmother was the first ever feminist icon I witnessed ever in my life. She was bold, fearless, outspoken, outgoing, and she just did what's right. My, fa my father moved for work to different town and a group of ladies came to greet my mother. And in that group, there was one lady who was constantly passing sad smiles to my mother. My mother, being my mother, got hold of it and she went to that lady who was just being so sad while looking at me. My mother asked her what was wrong. And she said, you only have a daughter. She's a single child. Who's going to take care of you? Who will lead the family lineage? What will happen to you when you will be old? And my mother calmly said, she's bold, she's one, and she's enough. That's the applaud for my mother. My mother was very calm when she said this because by then she became very blasé to sympathetic comments like this. But for a 12, 13 year old girl, me, listening this was bizarre. It was a question on my own existence. How could I live with that? As I grew up, or as I say that, as I started experiencing sexism, inequality, biases, discrimination as I grew up, I started understanding the silences. The silences behind the very normalized things like uh, not wearing slightly short skirts, or concepts like sitting like a girl, or running like a girl. Like a girl, what is even that? Like a girl. Or being not allowed to play sports like cricket. These silences started haunting me. They were no more silent for me. And in the final semester of my undergraduation, one of my very dear professors came ahead and said that, you know, history academia doesn't cover gender because it is not considered worth learning and reading about. I wanted to pursue gender studies because I wanted to prove this school of thought wrong. The history of gender is important to me and many others out there. How can we just sweep apart from our history? Just like that? Gender is present everywhere. And for me in my daily life, gender is beyond public toilets, beyond metro coaches, beyond work roles. It's in my learning, it's in my language, it's in my thought process, it's in the resources and content I consume, it's in my space, it's my, in my mobility, it's in my time, it's my space, it's everywhere. I feel very grateful and kind of hopeful that my kids will not associate gender with colors, clothes, language, work roles. So, since this event is organized by a school, I'm going to give you all a homework. Starting from this month, once a week, every month, 
try to switch the roles that are attributed to you stereotypically based on your gender. Try to do things that you won't do as society is asking you to do. And I hope this is enough food for thought for all of us. Thank you.